Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you've all been doing well. Um, I do apologise for the radio silence for two weeks. There's been a lot going on yet again and I do apologise for that. It doesn't bode well for a regular um, schedule for things now. But we've had, we've had um, General's Handbook and I still got to do the video I promised about mercenaries. I'm still working my way through that one on how I want to set it out. So I haven't forgotten about that. But I thought while General's Handbook has come, it's landed, it's still fresh, I thought I was going to revisit a old segment, well oldish segment because I haven't done it for a while. And I enjoyed doing it because um, it was something different. And that's the legends in their own lunch type. Which I thought now that we've got, a, you know, different changes to the armies, I'm not saying all of them, just to the armies, I'll go over armies that, go over armies again, and then go to the generals to see if there's something that we didn't like the look of before, but never really noticed because it was better points everywhere else, or if they were just repointed so it more viable so um i thought yeah let's give that a crack and as you can see by the back background first up is corn because everyone knows that i love corn blood for the blood god skulls for the skull throne so who's the first up on the block and that would be the exotic deathbringer Personally, I like the model. I know some people have said it's a little bit much. There's too much going on around the waist. There's all bits and bobs on it. But I like it. It's one that I, 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 I've always wanted to pick up the paint just because I like the look of it. But because I was doing um, Corn Demons, because I wanted to do Reaper's of Vengeance, I overlooked the mortal faction of corn and that is dull so I will admit it is very dull when you've got like the slaughter priests who can give you praise that buff the army and also they got the judgments now so it's essentially taking out a phase of your army but like I said, I wanted to do Reapers of Vengeance, Vengeance. I wanted it to be pure demon, because I've always liked a pure demon army. I've just always been weird like that. So, it's, I've overlooked it, and then I've been scro scrolling back through um, General's Handbook, and then I was looking back through my battle tome, and I took a bit more notice now of the mortals in in the battle tome and I thought to myself that the exalted death burner for 80 points he's a bit of a bargain because he is basically a bodyguard for your slaughter priest or if you wanted to put him with a blood stalker which is always good because you know, of the, the Bloodstalker's ability. Perhaps I'll go over that in another episode of uh, Legends in Their Own Lunchtime. But I want to concentrate on the Deathbringer. So, the Deathbringer is a lieutenant that's one step away from, you know, ascending to a lord or demon prince or just being, you know, the pinnacle of the pinnacle of Korn's favour within that warband. So, you know, they're great lieutenants, they're great fighters, you know, and they've got a commander presence on the battlefield. Model is actually stunning, you know, with the Claude Van Brace, the big mighty axe, but you can do a bit more with them than that. So, let's have a look at a war scroll, and then we'll break it down from there. 
And here we go guys, we got the war scroll up. As you can see it says in the description, an exalted deathbringer is a single model armed with one of the following weapons. Runes axe and skull gouger, bloodbite axe and rune mark shield, or impaling spear. So you've got your choice for you. Um, personally I like the blood by Dax. It's a very cool weapon, but as you will see further down, I kinda like the skull gouger as well a bit because it's a nice little uh, nice little ability, but we'll go on to that later on. So movement five, wounds five, bravery eight, four plus save. So he's he's middle of the road, he's not quite Corn Lord, but he's better than your Marauders, he's better than your Blood Warriors. So, he's keeping up, he's got a good save for Corn, and he's got a good amount of wounds, so he's not scared to get into a fight. I kind of like it, but each their own. So, let's go into the weapons. All melee, so you know, not an arrow to be flung at all by this guy. So, you've got the Ruinous Axe, which is one inch range, three attacks, four plus three plus to hit and to wound, minus one rend, two damage. So you get in probably one or two hits a turn if you're lucky, and you're still going to only get one or two, well, possibly one attack through. The blood bite axe is one inch range, six attacks, three plus four plus. So it's a vice versa on the other axe. No rend, one damage. So possibly doing the same difference by you if you think you've got three attacks, you've got three to you've got fifty fifty, so say three to four attacks, two wounds, when the other one is just like one attack and through and it does damage too. So like I said, I like the I like the uh blood bite axe, but that's because of what you can do with it with the rest of your army. So last up we got impaling spear, two inch range, five attacks, three plus three press, one inch rend, uh, minus one rend, damage one, one inch rend, my ass. So they're all roughly doing about the same. You, If you go for the impaling spear, you're not getting a lot extra with the abilities, but each their own, like I said. Um, like I said, I like the blood by axe because you get um, the rune mark shield with it. But I also like skull gouger with the ruinous axe. So yeah, um, tell me what you guys think. Do you think the blood by axe is better? Would you always go with a spear? Would you not even pick up the model because like eighty points, he's gonna be doing quite a bit he's gonna get his points back but perhaps I'm an optimist let me know right then guys we've scrolled down now and we'll have a look at the abilities so first up we got bloody lieutenant if this model is not your general add two to the attacks characteristics of this model's melee weapons while it is wholly within 12 inches of a friendly corn general so like I was just about to say, I would never take this guy as a general because of our bloody lieutenant. So if you think about it, you got five attacks on a ruin axe. axe. If you bodyguard him for your for your uh, general, perhaps you got your slaughter priest as a general, and you've got you got two guys backing him up. One of them should be your deathbringer because if you think about it, you've got um, you'd have five attacks for the ruin axe. axe you'd have eight for the blood by dax and you'll have seven for the spear add to the fact that you know say the blood bite and the imperial spear you you know that's an ex possibly an extra one attack in through so no i kind of like that that's really good that that is 80 points to me but they let alone what damage you can do so we go down now to rune mark shield uh roll a dice each time you allocated a wound or mortal wound to this model that was inflicted by a spell on a two plus that, that wound or mortal wound is negated so 
it's dampening the magic phase for um, your opponent. So you couple that with you know the all the skull altar and you know the other abilities of the army. That is fantastic. That's another mortal wound negation. It's just amazing. But here's the other one is skull gouger. This is the extra ability if you have the ruinous axe. So you won't be able to have the ruinous axe and the rune mark shield. So skull gouger in combat phase. If the unmodified save roll for an attack, the target is model is six. The attacking unit suffers D3 mortal wounds after all its attacks have been resolved. So it's a nice little counter attack. So yeah, it's good. How often that's going to come up, I don't know. It's you know it's good if you're going to run into battle and say you would write up your army list and you know the opponent didn't have any spells. Perhaps you know the rune mark shield would be you. Uh, it would be wasted and if it, somebody's not uh, taking wizards on the other army so it's nice at all it's a nice little ability for you know countering just a normal army but I don't think it's gonna happen often I still think blood bite axe and the shield is 10 times better combo and then we got brutal impalement so obviously we've had um, one for each weapon now with these abilities so, uh, if the unmodified wound roll for an attack made with the Impaling Spear is a 6, that inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any normal damage. So, you'll be doing, say, out of 7 attacks, because so I've obviously put the load, to load with him, 7 attacks, say 4 of them get through, 3 of them wound, and say you roll at least 1 6. That's 2 damage. Uh, plus a d3 so you you could average probably four wounds I'm guessing that's just a quick guesstimate with it but yeah I still think uh, the blood by dax and the rune mark shield are the better combo but like I said this is a this is Swiss army knife model this can be anything you want it to be it depends on the situation but I think with the prevalence of endless spells, judgments, you've got the fire slayers, magma, whatever it's called, magma toys or whatever, and you've got the re-release, re well, I say re-release, this Malign Sorcery 2.0 with Forbidden Power. So um, magic is going to be very prevalent at the moment, so I think that is a good way of keeping a heavy hitter in the in the fight so please if i'm wrong let me know or if you if you think i'm slightly off on my thinking you know let me know there's a comment section so you know let's get this uh have a discussion as like i say a community and last but not least it's command ability brutal command you can use this command ability at the start of the battle shock phase if you do so, pick a friendly model that with this command ability, so obviously is a Deathbringer, until the end of that phase. You do not have to take Battle Shock Test for friendly called mortal units that are wholly within 18 inches of this model. So he's keeping your troops where they should be in the fight. So it's it's a nice little command ability. It's probably gonna be last on your list when you're looking at all the other abilities for the units but like i said he's a swiss army knife he can do whatever you want him to and like i've been saying i would couple this guy with a with a um split stalker possibly if you only want to take one slaughter priest or if that's what you know the uh tournament you go into allows is just one one wizard or one slaughter priest i'd couple the exalted death bring up with the slaughter priest to give him a little bit of a bodyguard but also what i would do then is i'd put him with a blood secretor because the blood secretor has got this nifty little ability called the rage cone 
and it adds one to the attack characteristics of melee weapons used by friendly corn units while they are wholly within 16 inches of this model. So if you've kept him close by or with, within 16 inches, you'll be getting up to eight attacks, say, with the axe. So, you know, you've buffed yourself again on that one. So I think it's a nice little combo. But, you know, I am the noob, as the name suggests. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is it a different combination you can see going on? Would you not take him? Would you see him as a complete waste of time? He's, but he's just a good looking model. Let me know. There's a comment section. So, you know, tell me where I'm. Tell me where I'm wrong, basically. And that's it, guys. End of the video. It's a very short one today. Well, I say short when we've run over 15 minutes. So, middle of the road for me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope um, you get in contact and give us you a say on what you think about the model, whether it's still not one that you're going to pick up, is it something that you might give a second thought to now, please let me know. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for the next Legends in their own lunchtime, please also let us know down, down at the bottom because that's what the comment section is for, is for you to interact with me and for me to interact with you guys. And, you know, I, w I want to build a community through this channel, I want to, you know, talk to the wider audience of AOS players. Um, if you haven't done so, please press the subscribe button. I'm not going to ask you to click the notification bell because a, de a deep voice Welshman is probably not on your cup of tea. As long as, as long as you're notified that, that they're there, I don't need you to, I don't need to watch it straight away because I, I want you to come back. I want you to watch it in your own time to keep coming back. So, um, after me sucking up to you and put myself down, we have got Twitter, we have got Instagram, so the links are in the description below. We've got a Teespring account if you want to get your new gear on. I have been saying for a while I'm going to be putting more designs up, and I will, once I get, once I get time. And we have a PayPal account, so it's all there. Click on them if you want. Click on them if you want to go through to them. If you don't want to go through to them, that's fine. It was just thankful that you've uh, tuned in and listened to the video. So, until next time, my friends. Thank you again for watching this video, and I shall see you in the next one.